I'm going now to speak about A Force for Good versus The Evening Times. Now, what, what is this about? Well, as many of you will know, back in uh, the 11th of January, A Force for Good was out with our thin red line on a really rainy, windy day on Union Street in Glasgow. And we witnessed and we watched the Scottish nationalists wombling by. We witnessed their separation slouch. We witnessed the divisive doddlers winding and wobbling their weary way down Union Street. Too much public disdain, it might be added. And we were flying the flags, we were flying up the red, white and blue. We were reminding the world that Britain exists and unionists exist. And we also filmed them and we spent several hours, two of us, three of us, counting. And we came up with a number of 10,156 of them, which is an impressive number, it should be said. However, the Scottish nationalists are perpetually unable to tell the truth and so they came up with their uh, joke figure of 80,000 which they had already made up the night before and to their shame the Scottish media just accepted that even though they knew we were the go-to people to come to for the figure that we can document with video evidence. They just went with the 80,000 because it's a lot easier than having to talk to those pesky unionists. Because if you talk to them, then you've got to listen to them and then you might be convinced by them. So they just prefer to pretend that the unionist side doesn't exist. We spoke about that last week. So obviously that was getting annoying getting annoying. So we're opening up papers, 80,000, 80,000. We had told all the media of the figure, 10,156, that night. And we sent out tweets and Instagram posts and Facebook posts, and we really circulated that figure. And we had the video as well up on our website, aforceforgood.uk, which you can see if you, if you go to January 2019. 2020. Anyway, on the 13th, the march was on the 11th, on the 13th we picked up the Evening Times and it said here, huge march for Indiref 2 vote. Row over referendum rolls on as politicians join 80,000 on march. Okay, as politicians join 80,000 on march. So they were holding that out, that headline was being held out as if this was what happened. This was the figure, 80,000. And we thought, well, you know, that's not right. That's a misleading headline. And there are, there is soft law against that, that you shouldn't be able to do that. And it's, it's monitored largely by the Independent Press Standards Organization, who actually have an editor's code, wherein it says, the press must take care not to publish inaccurate, misleading or distorted information or images, including headlines not supported by the text. Now, we were aware that if you read the text, there was a little bit that said that this was the estimation by the organiser of the march. But you had to read the small text to find that out. And the 80,000 figure was not in inverted commas, there was no suggestion that this was somebody's estimation. It was just blandly put out there in the heading, 80,000 on March. So we, we uh, looked at the IPSO website and they said, try to get this figured out first with the editor. You know, see if you can resolve it with him. So we wrote to the editor of the Evening Times, the Glasgow Evening Times, who also, it should be said, happens to be the editor of the national newspaper as well the Scottish Nationalist Supporting Paper. Anyway, that aside, we waited for a response for one month, but answer came there none. So we thought, you know what, we're not in a rush about this, we'll write to him again. And so we sent him another letter on the 15th of February, and by the 15th of March there still had been no response. So we then approached the IPSO with our formal complaint. And we contended that, look, we're involved. A Force for Good is involved in this um, 
we attend these marches, we film them, we count them. Uh, we have a stake in this matter, and we are now known as the go-to people for these figures. There was plenty of time for the Evening Times to have found our figure, uh, because it was hugely put out on social media. Uh, the Evening Times has a duty uh, to provide balance, but there was no alternative uh, explanation in the article about, oh, we spoke to Alistair McConaughey of AFFG who said there was in fact 10,156 and he could prove this with video evidence. There was none of that. Um, and there was no evidence whatsoever other than the, um, the quote from the organiser of the march who has got form in seriously exaggerating his numbers. And so we said this headline is this headline is uh, in breach of paragraph one that the press should not include headlines which are not supported by the text. And we received a response on the 3rd of April. And they said this, I'll quote it. You said that the article breached clause one because it reported that 80,000 people were in attendance at the march when your organisation had only counted 10,156. We noted that the article did not state as a fact, but instead, instead said that this was an estimate. Uh, well, mm, the headline stated it as a fact, OK? On this basis, there was no possible breach of Clause 1. You are entitled to request that the executive decision to reject your complaint be reviewed. So on that basis, we did request a review. And we said the headline is not supported by the text. We are aware that the small print of the article does state that this is an estimation from the organiser. However, the headline clearly states 80,000 as a fact because it does not put it in inverted commas. And we ended saying if you had put it in inverted commas, then that would have suggested it was someone else's debatable estimation. And the headline and text would therefore have been in accord and we would not have complained. If they had put 80,000 in inverted commas, that would have made people look at it, stop and say, what's that then? Is that uh, who's who's saying that? You know, but no, the headline was not in inverted commas. So we got a response back this week on the 5th of May. Uh, disappointing. The committee noted your concerns. However, in this case, it considered that the headline claim was clarified by the text and the basis of the 80,000 figure was therefore evident to readers. Well, OK, that's the end of that matter. However, we do have some things to say in this that, firstly, please be aware the IPSO is not endorsing the 80,000 figure. It's not taking a position on the accuracy of the matter. Its concern is only whether the newspaper has clarified the basis of the figure. And those are the two words, clarification and basis. And it does believe that that figure has been clarified, that there is a basis for that figure in the text. Well, that's very unfortunate because it does seem that we are to conclude that it is acceptable in the eyes of the IPSO for a newspaper paper to plaster any old figure up there uh, and hold it out boldly as the truth to the casual reader, to the casual browser who's going through Twitter. Oh, 80,000. Oh, that's, that's, am 80, that's amazing. Oh. It seems appropriate to do that, to hold it out even if it is a wild estimation and you have to go to the small print to find out to find out the fact that it is just an estimation so it's a serious political concern for us since the initial damage is done with the headline because the headline is what most people these days are just looking at especially on social media march says 80000 on a facebook post or a twitter post people go 80000 right wow and then they scroll through it they don't click on it to go in to read the article, okay? So if if these figures have been put out there in 
in social media posts without inverted commas around these figures, people are just going to accept it as the truth. And they're not going to take time to clarify the figure or to find out what the basis of the figure is by reading the small print. So we have to be aware of that. So what can we do? Well, what we at A Force for Good can do when these marches start up again um, is we will be filming them and we will be counting them. And again, we will be getting the exact numbers. And we are going to make sure that we have a system in place whereby we immediately make a complaint to the IPSO to the point where they become sickened of our complaints. And we're to the point where all the editors and all the journalists in the Scottish media know that if you let that fly, you're going to get involved in an issue with the IPSO. That's the only thing that we can do. We might still get the same old answers, but we have to do it anyway. And we have to hope that some point down the line, the Scottish media and the journalists are going to grow a backbone and they're going to be able to say to Ian Blackford next time he's on the Joe Coburn show, Daily Politics Live, mouthing off about 80,000, she sh should be able to say to him, OK, Ian, what proof do you have for that? And then watch him stutter and stumble because he has got no proof. And we, we use that example because he did say that on the Joe Coburn show, 80,000, and Joe let it fly, did not challenge him. And obviously all the viewers as well, 99% of the viewers, the people who are not aware of our work, will think that that's a true figure as well. You know, journalists have to knock this on the head because if there was ever a second referendum and we go into this with these inflated figures, hugely inflating what we're up against, then that will have a massively demoralising effect upon unionism. OK, so that's all I'm going to say about that, other than the fact that what I've just said there is going to be released at five past two on our website, aforceforgood.uk, where you can read the whole thing there. And please share that link on Twitter and on Facebook and wherever you can, because we have to get the truth out. This is a long term fight. Slow and steady wins the race.